Lander is the online mastering platform utilizing continually learning artificial intelligence algorithms to automatically master your music with stylistic authenticity. With prices from less than £6 or $8 per master and subscriptions for unlimited masters from £18 or $24 a month. How does this service compare to a human mastering engineer with over 25 years of professional experience costing 12 times the amount? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Ed from EdThorn.com, here to help you make the most out of your home studios. In this video, we are comparing the results of a song mastered on Lander versus Mastering Engineer to the stars and YouTube educator Streaky from Streaky Mastering. I've used Streaky to master four tracks of my own, and I've been mightily impressed with the depth of sound, the stereo imaging, the solid low-end foundation, and the smoothness of the EQ. But this comes at a price. Streaky currently charges £80 plus 20% VAT, which are our UK taxes, bringing the price to £96 per song. Lander is offering one-off masters from £7.50, approximately $10, or packages of five and ten masters from as little as £6 or $8 per master. This is very cheap. Now before we explore the pros and cons of both services and compare how the masters sound, there's a link in the description below for 30% off land and mastering. Use the coupon below at the checkout to redeem this offer. I've also placed links to Streaky's YouTube channel and website. He hosts fantastic mastering courses well worth checking out if you're serious about learning to master yourself. <laughs> There are numerous pros to Lander, including its instant turnaround time. You will get a master back within a couple of minutes. It's very cheap, and there are multiple Sonic options to choose from, which we'll go into in a minute. The AI-driven algorithm on Lander has mastered millions of songs, and it has learned from all of these to create the most authentic mastering chain for your song. And you can also audition multiple revisions of your master to hone the sound. Again, we'll go through this a bit later. The possible downsides to Lander are that it is digital plugin mastering only, and I know this because it only takes about two minutes to revise a master, suggesting it is processing in offline mode rather than in real time, which is what would be required to run your audio through analog equipment. And I've racked my brains uh, for more cons of Lander, and I can't think of any. The obvious pros of a human mastering engineer is that they will likely run your audio through analog equipment, and this will add that famous analog warmth and those rich harmonics that we like in our sound. And in my experience, this does create a 3D depth of sound that I personally haven't been able to achieve with plugins. The cons of a human mastering engineer, though, are that the turnaround time can often be 24 to 48 hours, although Streaky's always had a track to me within 36 hours. You don't have selectable options to choose from, although you can send the mastering engineer reference tracks to give them an idea of what kind of sound you're after. The sound is potentially influenced by your mastering engineer's personal preferences, but again with Streaky, I've not found this to be the case. And relatively to Lander, it can be quite expensive. Even if you're paying someone $50, that's still five times what it would cost on Lander. Leave your thoughts about the pros and cons in the comments below, but let's dive into Logic and compare these two masters. Getting started with Lander is easy. Simply go to lander.com, head to pricing and choose the package you would like to choose. With the subscriptions, you get the mastering preferences that we'll see in a minute and the revision option. To get started, I'm going to drag and drop a track. Angel Feb. Now, as you can see, Lander is listening and analyzing the track. And if you time it, this will take about a minute and a half to two minutes to do. Once the track's uploaded, we can press this master icon here, and this gives us two options. Firstly, we can choose on the style of master we want, and we can have a warm vintage sound with soft compression for a thick, smooth sound, a balanced, controlled sound with focus on the balance, clarity, and the depth, or a modern, more open sound with emphasis on punch and presence. I am going to go for an open sound, because I want some punch and presence. And in terms of loudness, this is how much do we want to push the track. Now, I quite like loud tracks, so I want this track to be pushed into a limiter and be as loud as I can. So I'm going to go with high. Then we can create the, the master. But before we do that, on the subscription service, Lander also allows us to upload a reference track, which will be a sonic guide for Lander's artificial intelligence algorithm on how you want your master to sound. Now with the master complete, let's A-B this to the original. Click on the file there. Once Lander has completed your master, we can A-B the two. And the master. So 
straight away you can hear that has just evened out the frequency response and it's obviously raised the level and you can see from the waveform there's a good 6 dB in volume. But there's a nice clarity to the top end coming through now which is nice. Now if we want to revise this master we can do so by clicking the revision switch down here. How is the loudness? Now I would like this even louder so I'm going to go too quiet. Let's enable the distortion filter in case there's any clipping that wasn't in the original mix that's coming from um, pushing this track. Now, the EQ intensity didn't quite make sense to me initially, too low, good, or too high. What does that mean? What this is referring to is the effect of the EQ on your track. Do you want to really compensate for your e original track, or do you just want a little gentle bit of um, development? So I'm just going to leave this as good because I didn't think that was over the top. I thought it was fine. And we can further adjust the EQ. Are we happy with the lows, the mids, and the highs? I'd quite like to try pushing the low end on this, so I'm going to say they're a little thin. I want a bit more in the low mids, so I'll, let's just say they were weak. The highs were fine, and we didn't really hear the vocals, so we can't compare. But it's giving you these descriptive words rather than specific frequencies that might not make sense, but descriptive words to give you an idea of how you can tweak the sound. So you can hear that version has pushed the lows and the mids, and I actually preferred the original version. So we're going to dive into Logic and compare that to the streaky version. But before we do that, this is where we can release our song. Now, Lambda works similarly to DistroKid and Ditto in that you can use this platform to release your music to all the major music streaming platforms all in one place, which is really cool. There might be another video on that coming. But for now, let's download the track and get into Logic. I've got both files in Logic here, and the first thing I've had to do is align these files for the null test we're going to do in a second, because they didn't start at the same position despite having the exact same copy of the file. So I've had to go in and select samples and align these as closely as I can. And that's literally as close to identically placed as I can get. There's a slight difference but I'm not going to be able to do anything about that for this video. So, moment of truth, let's compare how they sound, and let's start with the Lander version first. Now straight away you can hear that the streaky mastered version is noticeably louder. But is it volume or is it perceived loudness? The meters were hitting minus 0.2 on the streaky one and about minus 0.3 to 5 on the lander one. So maybe we could have pushed the lander one harder. We can always go back onto lander and do that. You can see from the waveform that it, the streaky version is very heavily limited. But let's dive in and analyze this with a spectral analyzer. Now, if you thought that sounded rubbish, we were playing both tracks at the same time, so there were some minor discrepancies going on. With the point of achieving these yellow lines here, which are our peak frequency responses in 63 bands of this analyzer, and you can see the EQ curves are very, very similar. So both Streaky and Lander have gone for a similar EQ tone. Now, there's a bit more at 4K which I guess is leading to the additional perceived volume of the streaky version. Something else to note, though, is the LUFS levels. Streaky is going for an average LUFS of minus 8.9, 
Now, it's very common for mastering engineers to go to minus eight with LUFS, and this is just for this first section of the song. Later on, when it's louder, I know for a fact it does go beyond eight, even to seven. On the lander version, it goes to minus 11.5, so it's about two and a half LUFS less than the streaky version. So maybe in lander we could push this a little bit further. Now, to highlight any differences between these two tracks, we're going to perform a null test. So we're going to phase invert one of the tracks, play them at the same time. Now, what this should do is highlight any differences between the audio. We're aligning the peaks on one with the troughs with the other. And if there's any phase cancellation, we're going to hear some strange sounds. Now, if they're perfectly identical, which obviously they're not, they would perfectly cancel each other out. So if they're not in phase, we should be res left with a small, thin sounding version of the track. The smaller and thinner they are, the closer the tracks are to sounding identical. Now this won't highlight which track sounds better or worse, but leave your guesses in the comments below. So you can hear what we're left with is some sub content, a little bit of high detail, but very, very little. There's very little left of the track. So these aren't a million miles apart, but there are some differences between the two tracks. Now I wanted to go one step further with this null test idea. So I've bounced each file and down sampled them both to the same bit rate that people enjoy on Spotify. Because let's face it, most people listening to our masters are going to be listening on the go on their mobile phone devices through Apple EarPods. Now the bitrate for Spotify desktop is 160 kilobytes per second for the free account users and mobile users get an even more compressed signal with a bitrate of 96 kilobytes per second. This is pretty rubbish. There's a lot of destructive audio going on there. In phase again. So very similar result, only it just sounds rubbish at this down sampled bitrate. Now, I think if you're mastering for a professional album release, a record label, or film and television, I think using a specialist mastering engineer is probably sensible. However, if you're producing beats for clients, library music, or you want to check how your mixes will sound when mastered, or you put out so much music you need it to be cost effective, Lander is a great tool, and the cost makes it so ridiculously competitive. I'm definitely going to be using this to be testing my mixes moving forward. What do you guys think? Which option makes sense for you? Are there any pros and cons I've not discussed in this video that you're concerned about or that appeal to you? Let me know in the comments below and I'll answer as many questions as I can. Remember, you can get 30% off your mastering at Lander using the code in the description below at checkout. Be sure to check out Streaky on YouTube. He's a funny guy and his website for mastering courses is brilliant as well. I've been Ed Thorne. Thanks for watching.